Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jason White. This is my channel, Jason's Weird Reads. Thank you for joining me. Um, while you're here, hit the subscribe button, especially if you're into uh, horror fiction, science fiction, and fantasy. And comment below, and we will discuss some books. So, I'm not one to take the coronavirus uh, lightly at all. It's a it's a serious situation the world has found itself in. And I think a lot of us are, are frightened, including myself. But having said that, you know, I think we can still have a little bit of fun with it and not uh, scare each other, but maybe try to help ease some of the anxiety out there. So to that end, cheers. <sighs> All right, so uh, all silliness aside, um, I decided to do this a while ago. I've seen some other people do it as well, but I haven't really been able to get to making videos because my son is home full-time now, and where we live is kind of a small area, so it's difficult for me to get in front of the computer. And if you hear a weird sound in the background, it's actually my son. He's uh, he's on his tablet, <laughs> so hopefully things go well. All right, so this is my giant uh, my list of giant books to read while in uh, while in lockdown. Unfortunately for me, I am not in lockdown because my job, I make packaging for food, and so that's considered an essential for now. And so that's a good thing, though, because I'm still making money, and I don't have to worry about government assistance. Not yet, anyway. Um, so, you know, uh, I'm happy about that. Other than that, I've been, like, obsessing about this thing. I, I keep looking at updates, and I can't stop watching... <laughs> so let's uh, let's try to get our minds off this and I created a list here it's a bit of a mishmash of things but it's giant books and series to read while you're in lockdown and and I think this will hopefully help everyone you know pass by the time especially if you are locked down all right so the first one I, I kind of put as a cautionary and I see this on actually a lot of people's lists but I remember reading it back in uh, the 90s and I swear, I've read it two or three times, and every time I read it, I'd start to catch a cold. And, of course, I'm talking about The Stand by Stephen King. Now, it says, everyone knows what The Stand is, and I say this as a warning because you might start reading it and then start to freak out. <laughs> I know that, uh, excuse me, I know that I have in the past, and so, yeah, I think I might skip this one. But uh, I just wanted to mention it because... Uh, that first half of that book is incredible. It's it's very uh, Stephen King is so good at building up uh, his situation. I, th I think where Stephen King tends to fail is is executing. He builds up like the world, and then trying to end it is where he tem tends to fail. But uh, you know that that's his best. His worst stuff is often better than like some of the crap that's out there so so you know take that with a grain of salt but i really love the first half of the stand it's sort of like watching the titanic sink if you watch the movie the or titanic it's just uh it's incredible how he handles that i absolutely love that book but i don't think i'll be reading it right now <laughs> uh, a book by his son i'm going to mention is nosferatu by joe hill uh this is uh you know why not why not go visit Christmas land while we're all stuck in this darkness? Uh, of course, this this version of Christmas land is, is quite dark itself. Joe Hill uh, really changed things up. And, you know, I, I read this. When I read this, I read it on, uh, on audio. I listened to it. And Kate Mulgrew does the narration, and she is fantastic. I highly recommend that. I, I have seen some people complain about Kate Mulgrew's... Um, narration because she does kind of go over the top but it comes off more as passionate than her just trying to sell it if that makes any sense uh but i highly recommend the audiobook uh her voices are just fantastic but you know christmas uh land is about uh i found this book kind of strange because you at at first when you first meet the bad guy charlie manx you sort of understand why he's doing what he's doing. And so, but 
you find out later on, spoiler alert, that uh, his intentions aren't quite so wholesome so, uh, as, you know, as you once first thought. But I guess that's uh, what bad guys do. <laughs> they manipulate you. Of course, he's, uh, he's a bad guy and he's doing terrible things. And, uh, uh, but it's not just about Charlie Manx. There's other characters. The weird thing about that book, though, is that Charlie Manx is the one that sticks out the most. And so, uh, you know, I, I recommend it just for him. He's a very fascinating bad guy. And, uh, I absolutely love this book. I should reread it. Um, here's a series. I suggest, uh, anything by this author, actually. When I did my science fiction, uh, top ten science fiction list I had uh, this author on it and uh, it was uh, what was it? it was Pandora Star by Peter F Hamilton and it got me thinking that I want to uh, read um, the Commonwealth series which Pandora Star is the first book and I had a lot of people actually say dude you need to read more Peter F Hamilton because uh, Pandora Star is the only one I've read and I agree I, uh, I want to start reading them when I'm done with the, with the Wheel of Time series, which I'm actually halfway through the last book now. <laughs> I was thinking of starting a series by Peter F. Hamilton, but I, I don't think I'm going to go with what I suggested here that's on my list. I'm going to go with, uh, uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the series, but it starts with, uh, with the reality dysfunction. I got these books a little while ago, about a year, year and a half ago, at a used uh, bookstore while I was traveling, and I've never seen them before. Uh, the reality dysfunction, every time I see them now, it's uh, it's all condensed in one novel, but this, I think, is the British version, or the at least the UK one, and uh, they released the first book, because it's so big, into two. So this is part one, and this is part two. And so I'm thinking of uh, tackling these. So definitely check out Peter F. Hamilton. He creates these vast science fi uh, science fiction. It's kind of hard science fiction because there's a lot of science in, in the story I read of his, which was like a 800 to 1,000 page epic. And by epic, I mean it was just massive in story. There are so many stories. It's like an onion, just, just layers and layers. And uh, I absolutely loved it. And for some reason, I never continued. I think it was because just the timing and thick books for the longest time kind of scared me off. And they still do. But but I'm thinking of, uh, well, I've been tackling that little fear for the last year and a half or so. And I plan on continuing. So anything by uh, Peter F. Hamilton, it's really bugging me about the series name. It's the Night's Dawn Trilogy. So it's the Night's Dawn trilogy. Um, I'm going to be reading it soon, probably. Not necessarily if my mood changes, but I'm looking forward to reading it whenever I do get to it. If you want to maybe uh, uh, do a buddy read, uh, comment below and maybe we'll, uh, we'll hook something up in regards to that. All right, moving on. Another series is the, uh, I just mentioned it, The Wheel of Time. If you haven't read The Wheel of Time and you've been wanting to, this is the perfect opportunity to begin it, even if just to see if you like it or not. There's a, a lot of people who love this series. It's incredible. And there's a lot of people who likewise kind of hate it. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm on more on the love, love it side. It's, uh, it's got its issues, though. There's some parts, especially in the middle, near the end of the series books 9 and 10 were just they were they were awful in my opinion well maybe not awful but it's hard to explain they just got really really boring <laughs> and uh, and hard to slog through uh, it's because they were very sluggish and that's just a warning if you don't if you don't like that sort of thing but you know the series itself is very rewarding if you like if you like fantasy that's very detailed in world building, then you might like Wheel of Time. If you like characters that are rich and have a very slow arc throughout the entire series, you're probably going to like this series as well. Um, 
I really enjoyed the characters and uh, the world building. Those are like my two favorite aspects of the book. That's what kept me going even during the slog because these characters, even during the slog, would uh, continue to evolve and grow. So definitely pick up The Wheel of Time. And the first book for that is Eye of the World it's by Robert Jordan. And the last three books were uh, because Robert Jordan sadly passed away. Uh, Brandon Sanderson uh, picked up the well, final three books. Definitely check that out. Now, my next suggestion is uh, one I read recently, and I absolutely loved it, and it's The Institute, another Stephen King book. Hope you don't mind. But this is his uh, most recent book, and uh, at this time anyway, that I'm aware of. And it was just a lot of fun. Um, if you can get past the first chapter... Which, uh, you know, if you read, if you go read the synopsis for the Institute and then you start to read it, the first chapter is going to confuse you. You're going to be like, I thought this book was about children in an institute, uh, children with like supernatural powers in an institute, sort of like firefighter or fire starter, sorry. But uh, it starts off with this guy who goes to a, a small town and decides to live there for a while. And you're like, Huh? <laughs> but you know honestly I love that first chapter it's uh, it was just mainly the character that goes there I, I kind of enjoyed him and I don't know why he, and he comes back later uh, but that chapter is maybe a little bit too long for what the book becomes but the whole book itself I think is well it's over 500 pages it's a lot of fun to read though once you get past that first chapter it's uh, it becomes very much addictive and you can't stop reading the thing and it does sweep you away, man. It really takes you out of your reality. Um, another series for you, and if you haven't read it already, it's A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. I read this series about... I started it way back when it started in the 90s. And then I stopped reading it, and I didn't pick it up again until about 2008 or 9. No, oh, wait, I think it was 2007. And uh, I ended up reading the first two books at least twice, maybe even three times. The third book I think I read twice, and then the fourth and fifth book I've only read once because they're not, they're not so great as the first three, but those first three books, oh my god, those books. <laughs> if you're completely new to uh, A Song of Ice and Fire, and you've never watched the show Game of Thrones... Do yourself a favor and read those first three books. You will, you will have your mind blown. It's a game changer for fantasy, and you can see it rippling now with the whole grim dark movement. Although George R. R. Martin isn't the sole, uh, solely responsible for the grim dark movement, in my opinion, I think uh, you got to give a lot of credit to Joe Abercrombie, and uh, Joe Abercrombie is going to make a list in the future. I had somebody point that out, that they would like me to talk about Joe Abercrombie, and I've read a few of his books, not all of them, and uh, I have some thoughts and opinions on his work, and they're they're pretty positive, so you don't have to worry, <laughs> but you know, I'll get to that in another video. Anyways, uh, yeah, Song of Ice and Fire, you notice I've been calling it that instead of Game of Thrones, I'm one of those people who gets annoyed when you call it Game of Thrones. <laughs> the books is a Song of Ice and Fire. They should have, you know, they really should, the HBO show should have kept it the same. Uh, just called it A Song of Ice and Fire. It's, what's what's wrong with that? Alright, that's, that's a little bit of a rant off my chest. Huzzah! This next series I have not completed by any means. I've read the first two books. But if you really want something to take your mind off today's problems, begin reading The Malazan book of the fallen by Steven Erickson um, and this will take your mind off the the issues of the world because these books are dense and they are hard to figure out what's going on I've heard people say that you need to read the series two or three times before you start to understand what's going on and that in itself is mind-boggling but I read the first two books and I enjoyed them but yeah you do have a sense of what what's going on and the reason for that Anyone who's read the series will know what I'm talking about. The very first book, the very first chapter, 
you're just dumped into a situation and you're given absolutely no background information at all there's like no info dumping and so you have no idea what's going on literally uh, and so you follow these characters and you try to figure out what they're doing and it's hard and so you're gonna you're gonna be sitting there trying to figure out what's going on and the world will just poof, go away <laughs> but you know that's another series I want to read after Wheel of Time um, it's sort of uh, battling between that and the Peter F. Hamilton if you've made it this far and you want to give me a bump as to where I should go next either the Malazan books or the Peter F. Hamilton books feel free to comment I might, I might not follow your advice but uh, but you still feel free to comment all right, final book here, and this one is different. This one isn't a genre, unless you consider war a genre, but if you want to know what it's like to live in squalor and hellish conditions, then I can't recommend um, Matterhorn by Carl Melantis. I can't recommend it any more than... I can recommend this one the most, perhaps, out of all these, if you want that type of setting, because this is a book about the Vietnam War. We follow pretty much a guy who's uh, crafted after the author himself because he served in the Vietnam War and uh, the one thing I remember about this book and I've never obviously I've never been in in the Vietnam War but I've read a lot about it and uh, so this book to me feels a lot like the entire experience of being uh, being a soldier on on the ground fighting against the Viet Cong or the North Vietnamese, sorry, um, from day one to to the end. And you go through certain steps, like sitting in the base, waiting for something to do, going out and patrol into the jungle. There's even like a tiger attack in this, where one of the men in a patrol gets attacked and killed by a tiger. <laughs> That's not, not something I ever read of before, uh, but, you know, I, I don't doubt it's ever happened. I, mean, I do not doubt that it's ever happened. I'm sure it has. Um, and you also get the uh, uh, the political end um, because our main character is a lieutenant, and so he has to deal with the uh, upper echelon of uh, of commandment. Commandment. <laughs> uh, you know, he has to deal with like the uh, captains and all the higher up ranked people. For some reason, it's all slipping my mind right now. Uh, but there's a lot of distrust when it comes to their commanders, and because there's, you know, reading this book makes you question whether it's a good idea to join the military or not, and I'm not making this as a political s statement, but when you do and you go to war, if you sign up for the military and you go to war, you're under the, the you're suddenly under the command of people who are putting their career and their future ahead of what your life existence means and so they're gonna make decisions and often they're very bad decisions and send you into terrible situations and they're gonna demand that you come out successful so that they will look good and their careers will advance because all those leaders ultimately want to become you know generals and the generals want to want another star on their on their uh, on their collar and you know it, it becomes sad very sad and uh, so you know I kind of enjoyed a Vietnam War book about both ends being in the jungle and fighting the enemy uh, you know, and as screwed up as that could be, and then having to deal with the uh, political bullshit, just being in the jungle with these characters, and you get to know them, and you get to love them, and you kind of feel bad when they, uh, and if they die. So, definitely check out Matterhorn, especially if you're interested at all in uh, the Vietnam War. For some strange reason, when I was younger, I was, like, obsessed with the Vietnam War. I couldn't stop reading about it or uh, watching uh, movies or documentaries about it. So that is my list of uh, things to occupy your time while in lockdown. This was meant to be fun 
and to hopefully take you out of uh, out of the situation that the world is in. It's kind of a scary place right now. And uh, so on that note, take care of yourselves, stay healthy, keep being creative if you can. I understand full well if you're having trouble creating because there's a lot of people out there right now like me who obsess over all the little details that are slowly being released to us. And uh, so on that note, take care of yourself and I'll catch you in the next bookish video.